It's a nice, short, compact, a downsized, the tiny, light baby blue on it. What's happening, Fusion friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we've got another unboxing, but this one's fun because it's themed. Everything is sized down, tiny, small, compact, finesse, you might say. Uh, these are things that I'm really excited to use because some of them took me forever to get my hands on. You couldn't find them anywhere. Everywhere was sold out. So uh, enough yapping, I'm gonna get right into it. The number one thing uh, that I'm most excited to use is these. I had seen pictures of these on Instagram for some time, couldn't find them, and finally got my hands on them. These are the new Ike's Mini Swim Jig from Missile Jigs. As you can see on the back here, it takes you through every Thing. It's got a little bit different weighted head. It's keel weighted, so it's not going to roll in you. It's a nice, short, compact profile. It's got that big eye on the front that I really like. Talk about a compact little swim jig that I think is going to kill in ponds, uh, the small lakes that I've got around here. I cannot wait to tie this thing on. You know how I'm a, a finesse jig fan, of course. Randizzle got me on the finesse jigs, you know, when you're working rocks and stuff. But a little small, tiny, compact swim jig like this, uh, I think is going to do some work, especially when those fish are finicky. Now, those little swim jigs are made perfect to pair with the uh, the mini D-chunk that Missile Baits put out. Awesome little trailer. I can't wait to use this on some of those. Chatter baits, I think this is going to have a bunch of uses. Even the round ball head finesse jig that Randall and I use, uh, they pair really nicely with that. Now, they come in some really cool colors, these little mini swim jigs. We've got the chartreuse white and purple, kind of the uh, the Baxter Baitman special, funny enough. Uh, Baxter and I both love the chartreuse and purple. Uh, they've got bone. You see that a lot of topwater crank swim baits. You don't see that in jigs. It's an interesting color. They have the bluegill, which is like a green pumpkin with green glitter, flash, and flake in it. You know, kind of your bluegill imitation. The tried and true black and blue, they call it bruiser, which will match perfect with that mini D chunk on there. Oh, Get the standard old green pumpkin, gives you a lot of options for trailer colors. Ike Secret, this is an interesting one. It's kind of some light baby blue on it with some uh, green pumpkin and black. You know I'm picking up some of the June bug, black and purple. Uh, I think is highly underrated. It's got the little chartreuse eyes. Got the lava craw that I think is going to kill it this spring. You've got the deep red and the orange on it. Perfect colors for spring. Uh, there's also a pearl white uh, that I didn't get my hands on, but there's uh, the shad flash that I have here. A little bit more translucent, a little bit more natural looking, but I cannot wait to tie some of these on and throw them this spring. I think they're gonna do work. Now, speaking of baits that I've been excited to get my hands on, we've got some of these. These are the Ott's Garage, the tiny, so the cool thing about these are they're a little bit smaller. It's a smaller compact profile, uh, but they're only diving to four feet. Now I had some of the Ott's Garage, uh, which normally dived like six feet. And where I fish from the bank, they just dive a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too dig, too, too. So I think these are gonna be key in those spots where I'm parallel in the bank, riprap banks and such, uh, you know, the little fishing jetties. Going just a little bit shallower is definitely gonna help. I can't wait to throw these this spring because uh, as you can see there, it's a flat sided crankbait. It's got a nice circuit board lip on it. Good, sturdy, sharp hooks on it. I got some of these out and was testing them. Um, really nice hardware on them. Great for the cold water and the buoyancy of that balsa, making sure it's gonna float up is awesome for bank anglers. I grabbed a number of awesome colors. This is the shad color. Really good natural looking color. I got the old perch. That's kind of the old school perch look. Really digging the look of that one in stained water or uh, where there are perch. Got the mossy chartreuse car. You got that brown on top, the chartreuse and the orange belly, another good one. And the Helsinki shad, one of my favorite colors that Rapala puts out. Uh, I think this is gonna be one of my favorites around here. I also got the live river shad, which is almost like a Tennessee shad. Uh, this one has the foil on it though, which looks really nice. Cool paint job. It's got kind of that green uh, uh, pearly up top. Uh, but looks cool, especially when you've got some sun and want that to give a little flash. I like that uh, that foil on it. I grabbed this one because I know everybody's going to love uh, the name of it. It's the Root Beer Craw. Root Beer is a color that I actually do like to throw. Uh, this, I don't know, uh, doesn't really remind me of the Root Beer. It's usually got like the yellow and brown, but uh, I still like the craw color. Good and natural. This one they call Big Shad. So it's got the iridescent greens on it, that purple uh, kind of greenish up top with that yellow line. Almost reminds you of like a spinoff of the Sexy Shad. Uh, but that's going to be a good one around here too. The name on this one is Crawdad. I don't, I don't know if they mislabeled this one, but it's more like a, I would have thought this was like Gold Shiner or something. I don't know if that's wrong uh, or what the deal is, but it's like a Gold Shiner looking thing with a shad dot. So I don't, I don't know about Crawdad. What I mean, see, they put Crawdad on there. I don't, I don't think that's a Crawdad. And then the Citrus Shad, perfect for that dirtier water where you want a little bit brighter color. Um, I like that with the uh, kind of the orange and chartreuse on the belly. Again, a good shad profile, you know, bait fish, anything where you want a little bit more of a, an oomph, a brightness to it. Well, sticking with the whole crankbait theme, I got some Jackal crankbaits. I honestly don't really throw any Jackal stuff at all. It's kind of that JDM stuff coming over. Uh, but this is a cool one. They call it the Mush Bob 
50SR. Now this is a small bodied crank. Uh, they say it does really good around cover in that compact profile. The other thing I like about it, look at the range on it, 1.2 meters. So this is a shallow diving crank, again, for bank bait, bank, bank bait? bank fishing which uh, people don't talk about enough i feel like there's all kinds of people talking about pro secret tips that are you know undiscovered and now that you can find them and all these other you know, like tournament deals but as far as bank fishing i feel like uh bank anglers still don't get enough love so this is going to be another good one <clears throat> a little bit pricier uh, i know there are some other alternatives but it's one i wanted to try because it comes in some really neat colors this one they call white bone which reminded me of like a, a bluegill but it's got that holographic kind of flashy color to it. The first one that I was showing you was Muddy Chartreuse Fish, which again, kind of reminds me of that bluegill theme. And you know, as soon as I saw the uh, the red craw look, I had to get that one for spring. Again, shallow diving, spring is gonna be muddier water. I wanna keep it shallow because that muddier water will drive those fish up shallow, uh, the water that's warmer. And again, spring, red does kill. It's, it's a great color that catches a lot of fish. I didn't buy into it for a long time, but it's it's a worker. Okay, next up, another search bait that I'm interested to try this spring. This is the Stealth Blade. I think I had one of these and lost it within a few casts, which is what happens with uh, with any sort of expensive jackhammer or, whoa, hey, did you see that? I'm like Spider-Man. Any sort of uh, expensive lure, I, I seem to lose it in a couple casts. So I grabbed a few more of these. Uh, now this color here is the, uh, the Clear Water Shad. I tried to go with colors that were a little bit more natural, uh, a little bit more translucent, because with this Stealth Blade, you can see here it's got the plastic blade that's see-through. So it doesn't have as strong of a vibration to it. Gonna kind of look at this as the places where you want a downsized kind of chatterbait that doesn't bounce and bang as much because chatterbait does give off quite a bit of thump. So gonna try these out more. I've had a lot of people asking questions on it and I just hadn't put in the time. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna grab some of these and try them. Uh, this is the green pumpkin shad again. Pretty normal looking, just with a little bit of green pumpkin. I think that's a, a good imitation to bait fish, you know, either bluegill, shad, anything like that where it's kind of got the dark top and the, you know, the white lighter belly. I grabbed the Bee Height Delight, truly one of my favorite colors that uh, that they make in the uh, the chatter baits. Good color, again, the green pumpkin chartreuse, great way to mimic bluegill. And lastly, Spot Remover, very good natural color. That silver head, gonna give a little bit of flash, uh, you know, kind of a translucent, see-through, but still natural skirt. So we'll see how they do. I don't know, I've, I've really heard kind of split, uh, you know, decisions on these from people. Some people really like it and say it's a cool, downsized, finesse, you know, version of the uh, the chatterbait. Other people say, don't waste your money on it, get the regular jackhammer or other chatterbait. So I don't know, we'll see. Maybe they're hype, maybe they're cool. If you've used them, comment below and let me know. I'm interested because I think they're kind of cool. Okay, I'm excited about these because it's been a while since I've got to show y'all some frogs. Uh, these are the new Mini Spo. This is the Bronze Eye Pop 40. Now the smallest frogs that I've thrown, I think, are the little Booyah frogs. You can see here the difference between the size. The Booyahs are still a decent little amount bigger than these. Let me take one out. These little dudes are only one fifth of an ounce, 40 millimeters long. I don't know what the hookup ratio is gonna be like on these um, as I just took it out of the box and tried to squish it down. The back is kind of fat. I feel like it, it needed some little bit bigger hooks on it, but hooks are razor sharp. They do come with gamagatsu hooks, this little pop and mouth. One thing you can do is downsize to a smaller frog like this when you feel like you're getting the bites, but the fish just aren't getting it. Sometimes it's small fish and with frog fishing, sometimes they just flat out miss it. But going to a little bit smaller profile frog can help. Now I'm going to trim up these legs a little bit too. And I think uh, I'm going to throw this on a medium heavy spinning setup. I've just got an old spinning rod with some braid on it that I think will do well on this, maybe some 30 pound braid. Now this isn't gonna do well in the thick cover, right? Because if you get one of these little guys with little braid, uh, you know, down into a bunch of branches or in a bunch of thick lily pads and stuff, gonna be hard to get it out. But if you're working the edges of cattails or you've got like a little pond that's got some grass lines, weed edges, I think this dude uh, does have some potential. Now, like I said, the one thing I'm scared of is that hookup ratio because when you squish this down there, there's not a lot of hook room. This first color was the natural green. Uh, the top looks cool, kind of like your leopard frog, but the bottom has that white uh, with the black lines and some yellow on it. I think it's a good bluegill imitation. I also got the clear chartreuse. So in that cleaner water, this is kind of like a pearly translucent see-through. Good way to mimic those young bait fish, even young bluegill that kind of have that iridescent flash to them. And then the rainforest black, uh, one of my favorite colors that they make black belly with just the yellow on it looks really nice uh, and mostly uh, I was gonna get just the all black mm -hmm. that's what I throw mostly is just a straight black but they didn't have it so uh, this was the next best thing they look pretty cool so we'll see what they do I don't I don't know interesting okay the last thing I've got before we got into the soft plastics are some of these 
These are some little blingy, flashy, underspin, you know, kind of looking little blades here that you can put onto any sort of rig you want. Now it's got a little hole here, so you can put the line of your like Texas rig, uh, you know, up in front of the weight. You could put it on there, so if you're bouncing a worm or a swim bait, it's gonna give a little bit of flash in front of it. I also thought you could take something like the old uh, regular underspin, thread it onto the hook like so, push it down on there, it's rubber, it's got some give to it, and look at this. You could make like a tri spin. You imagine this thing coming through. Now this is a way to uh, to mimic like a little tiny uh, a rig. If you've got you know a rig restrictions, some states can't even use them. If you don't want to throw like a big spinner bait with big huge blades all over it, look at that. That baby flashing out to the sides. Hold on, let's get a let's get a plastic. Oh, what do y'all think of that? I think this might look pretty cool. Picasso has one kind of like this. Uh, I really wanted to try for a long time, but. G Willikers couldn't get my hands on them because Tackle Junkie bought uh, every single one that ever existed. So pretty cool. Like I said, it's rubber, so it should stay there uh, in place. Uh, these are rubber here at Stretch. You can see there, so you shouldn't have to worry about fish breaking them off. Durability should be good. I don't know. This is a this is the old Cumberland underspin head. Y'all know I'm a big fan of the Cumberland underspin. Uh, the new one it would look even better with on here. I like the head design in the new one. It's a little bit shorter, not as long. So I don't know. Yeah, man, my uh, my rigging on that swim bait wasn't very good, but hey. It's got the shad down. I don't know. Comment below. What do you think? Think this will catch some fish? I think I could trick a few fish into eating this beautiful little thing. Okay, into the soft plastics. When I saw these, I wanted to give them a try. Uh, this is actually the color that came up when I was browsing. Uh, and we have a bunch of rusty crawfish. That's what this is. The Lil General, 2.75 inches. This is in that rusty craw color. Uh, they're an invasive species around here in Iowa. So I thought, man, you know what? That might be cool to try. And a lot of the crawdads that we have kind of have that whitish creamish color belly and then you know various shades of brown uh, almost green pumpkin um so i think this is going to be a pretty killer uh and cool little color to try now it does have that power bait stink which i've got a a ton of confidence in the power bait scent looks good it's got a little bit of that blue and orange flash in it but it's your typical ned rig so put some of these on the uh, the ewg ned rigs that i've made or if you buy some a bunch of companies have those and if you're a bank angler they are a game changer because you're not getting that open hook snagged all the time so uh that rusty crop mm. now i did have to get some cinnamon purple which is like your darker uh kind of green pumpkin mixed in with some purple flash a little bit of purple color in there I love green pumpkin purple. Again, I think that's a good way to mimic uh, juvenile bluegill. Uh, and it also looks like a crawdad, so it can pull double duty. Uh, the Burley boys will be happy to know they make the old shark deuce. This is the copper truce color. It's got that uh, nice chartreuse belly. You flip it around, it's got some copper flake in there. Does this have black? Yeah, some black flake through it too. And kind of that green pumpkin brown top. Now, uh, if you watch Burley and Paul, they call it the Shark Deuce. It's their favorite color, uh, and it is. It's a really good color uh, in the Z-Man, and now apparently they have it in this, in the Copper Truce, in the Power Bait, which it's an interesting feel to it. Like, the Power Bait stuff kind of weirds me out because it almost feels like, oh, dead skin or something. I don't even know how to say it, but uh, it's an interesting texture. Definitely has a stank to it. Whew. Now, I said I wanted to do more drop shotting this year. I saw these, and they look pretty good. The KVD Dream Shot is probably one of my favorite drop shot baits that I've used. Now, I am not a drop shot master. I've had Robo Worms before and used them. I haven't had a ton of good luck on them. I know they're an awesome drop shot lure. Uh, but this one I saw, this is Aaron's color, Rust is Soul, Aaron Martin's. This is the uh, this is Aaron's Magic, a really good color that I like in the Robo Worm. Uh, I did catch a few on this color, but I didn't crazily slay on the, the Robo Worm that day I was using them. But really cool color. It's got the green pumpkin, the brown. It's got a line of kind of bluish purple in it and then down to that kind of brown belly. So really neat. Again, you know, bluegill, pond color that I think will do a lot of good work. But it's the sculpin shape. So it's got a little bit of a, you know, a, uh, like a fin type looking deal there. You can see it's kind of got that fishy looking head, then tapers down and then gets a little bit wider on the end of that tail, kind of like a bulb. Um, I like it. It kind of reminded me of the KVD Dream Shot. So I figured, you know what, let's give these a try. They're brand new. Um, I think that's a good little profile. What size are these? Four inch, four inch, a good little, uh, you know, drop shot size around here. I would think this would kill for the smallies. So maybe that's something I'll have to do. Dad mentioned going to the uh, Mississippi and trying to get on some more smallies. So I got some of the MM3, uh, a purpley bluish with the, uh, the brown belly and it's got some red flake through it. I mean, that yells almost a tequila sunrise to me. You know, I'm getting that one. I got some of the uh, the bold bluegill, which is also a cool, cool color for, you know, the ponds and stuff. A little bit lighter brown top. It's got like a greenish black line through it. And then that chartreuse belly. I like these laminates, how they've got the different colors mixed in there. 
look very neat, but I think that'll be a good one here in the Midwest. And lastly, I got the Oxblood Red Flake. Now this one, when you put it like in the light, you can see it's got a bright purple like midline through it. Very cool the way they did that color. Uh, again, it's pretty much brown with red flake in it. Uh, and then that purple line in the middle just looks absolutely cool. Okay, last up in the box, sticking with our tiny trend, I got a couple of the uh, the Rage Tail deals. Now these are the little some little Ned Rigs, but they're the little cutter worms. These little dudes are three inches long. Look at that, and that is gonna look tasty on a Ned Rig. Again, that EWG swim this, hop it. It's got that Ned Rage, you know, flangey tail that's gonna give a, a nice tight little kind of kick back there. You could also use this honestly on like a little swim jig, maybe even an underspin or something. Uh, heck, maybe even like a downsized chatterbait, but uh, I think these are going to be cool. Give them a try. You know, a lot of the Ned Rigs are just like a stick. There's no sort of action to it. So maybe with a little bit of a thump and a kick back here, uh, we'll see how this does. That's what I thought for like some darker colors uh, in water, maybe where you want a little bit of vibration. See what that does. And I got some of those in the morning dawn, that kind of bluish, pinkish. Might have to take one of my spike it markers and add some black to that. And that would be, uh, that'd be very close to Tequila Sunrise, huh? Huh? I like it. Okay, last but not least, I got some of the Rage Ned Craws. I think I got maybe one pack of these. Um, I grabbed a few more because I want to get back into my jig making, some of my little finesse jigs. Uh, and these dudes will do a perfect job on one of those now. And again, it's got those little flappers in back. Now, the, uh, the TRD Craws from Z-Man, I probably like those a little bit more than the regular TRDs. Uh, they've got those little floating claws in back, but... With this, you're gonna get a little bit of kicking action, a little bit of thump to it. See, maybe if those fish are hitting it on the fall more, something like this, it's gonna slow that fall and it's gonna give it some actions. Got some old watermelon red, great color and cleaner, clearer water. And these are two and three fourths inches. I don't think I said that, but um, cool color there. And then last, the blue craw, that green pumpkin with that highlighty kind of blue pearless flash in it. Oh, uh, looks great. So do me a favor, Fisher friends, comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see me throw this year. For me, it's gotta be the two that I waited forever to get my hands on, the Tiny Ots Garage Tiny 4. Uh, again, I really like that six foot diver, but most of the places I was fishing from the bank, it was too deep. This guy, I think is gonna be a savior. I think it's gonna be a fish catcher. Also that Ike's mini swim jig. I mean, talk about a cool little tiny, look at that, fits in the palm of my hand, little compact profile, Great colors, and again with those mini D chunks, those truly I think are going to be some of my favorite trailers uh, as far as you know finesse type stuff. You want a little kick, they pair perfectly with this. It's got a flat bottom, and the way that head is shaped, you can see there, comes through grass well. You can ride up and over wood well, again with that flat bottom. It's gonna sit just like that when you need it to, so I don't know. And today's subscribe feature friend is my guy, Al Cavanaugh. Al, thank you very much for watching and supporting. I appreciate it a ton. I did see you were the first comment uh, on my Ned Rig video, which is funny. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you everybody else who continues to support, watch. It means a ton to me. I've got a few more unboxings coming, uh, some real rod stuff. I've got, uh, I've got a bunch of stuff. I just can't wait for spring fishing. So enough for me. I need to get the rest of this edited and uh, go to bed. So. Love y'all, appreciate you. Thank you again so much for watching and supporting my channel. Uh, and until next time.